I think Colin's Ash should answer that. <laughs> hey, I'm just gonna, you can answer this, but I'll just say it caught me off guard when I looked at it in the morning. I grabbed my coffee uh, at uh, Starbucks and I looked, holy. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, that came up last night as well as, as to whether or not that's, uh, it, it goes to the polls, right? Like, do we need an embargo period? Or if you've already made up your mind, does it really matter what the poll says or what a picture shows? Uh, it shouldn't come down to uh, something like that, but it's a, it's a good question. Yeah, it's a great question. And I, there was rumors that Bowman bought our front, our front wrap ads, and I was, I woke up like fearful that he did. And there's sort of a separation of church and state with the advertising department, so I didn't really know, and I didn't want to, you know, bring make big stink of it. But I was really grateful that he didn't buy our wrap or the signs wrap. He um, had the banner. He had the banner. Yeah, yeah. And so. I, that's clearly an ad. I think the, the bigger fear is that it looks like, especially after our no endorsement thing this year, it would have looked like an obvious and an obviously an endorsement. So I, is it, I mean, the fact is those banner ads pay my salary and they are lucrative and they're the new thing. And as a journalist, I hate them as like a person who wants to pay your mortgage. You know, I, it's, this, is, this is the reality, right? So um, I don't think most readers are, I, I don't. I think they know it's an ad and it's bought and paid for, and they, they are able to separate them from the content uh, in the in the paper in, in Metro. Um, and but I mean, there was a big hubbub in, at the Brandon Sun in the by election. Um, Trudeau and Rolf Dinsdale in the by election just recently. They bought the entire wrap of the Brandon Sun, and people were outraged. And I was kind of outraged. So yeah. So it's 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 a great question. It's going to come up every election. Um, yeah, it's. I, I like to have a job. And, 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 I, and I guess just to clarify too, I mean, the rap is like a, it's an, it's like an advertising yeah. piece that kind of comes around, right? Like as opposed to, um, you know, the actual like. I mean, it looks like the front page of the paper, but it's not actually the front page of the yeah. paper, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and, and I mean that. I guess that. I mean that tactic is is, is working. And the other example I was thinking of was as your. You know, when I saw Metro, when I saw Metro yesterday, I was thinking of actually in the last BC election, the day after the leaders debate, Christy Clark and the Liberals bought a front, you know, the, the comeback kid, and it was this big, you know, it was a story about how Christy Clark, who the polls in and, and, and that election were saying were, the Liberals were going to get absolutely drugged. Uh, they had the debate and they were saying, no, she did it, and there was a whole ethical uh, discussion about that. Royce, what would you add? I actually, I got that edition. I picked it up when I was getting on the Sky Train. And I was surprised by it. If I hadn't looked closely, I wouldn't have known that it was uh, an, an advertisement, essentially. Um, I'm, I'm less concerned about uh, these things as I, as I am about polls. I think it's appalling that polls are released two days before an election campaign. We know that these influence the results. Uh, I can't believe there's not a black hole period uh, when they could be released. It's uh, it's appalling, to be honest. What, what would be an appropriate black hole period? <laughs> <laughs> like, is it, you know, is it seven days, ten days? I need specific questions. I have to look at what other cities are doing. Uh, what I do know is two days is, is much too short. Uh, we know this had an effect. It would have, this would have contributed to the total collapse of Steve's support. I have no doubt of that. Just, just to push back on that a bit, voters should have the most information possible. And as a journalist, I want more information. And if, if you're a voter and you're saying, I'm going to switch my vote based on this poll. You're still making a legitimate choice based on rational amounts of information that are out there. Why? I mean, voters aren't that stupid. And plus, I want more information. I want more, more options, more, more strategy, more, you know, more. Do you want people to vote sincerely or strategically? But people do anyway all the time. No, no, they wouldn't be voting strategically sure. if they didn't have this information. That people, people were already voting strategically. The Rob Falcon who let yeah. folks were, you know, should I vote for him? I don't know. What they tell pollsters might not be what they actually right. choose to do on, you know. But then you guys have a number of polls running in the paper as well, right? On, yep. on the website. So there's polls everywhere now. Everybody wants this instant, what the heck's going on? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, they're different. Yeah. But you know what, though, at the end of the day, you're yeah, different. If you black out your poll, and then people are just on the online polls, then it's just, you know, whoever's camp that can hit the click button there more times, yeah. then what do we got? So, at the end of the day, I'm kind of with you. Like, you know what, if the poll comes out, that still doesn't uh, take away the fact that you've got to run a solid election, and you've got to win that election on your principles and your platforms. And if that doesn't resonate with the voters, I'm not sure that poll uh, outcome's going to help you. And I think the other thing to keep in mind, too, is that without 
without polls or if there's more restrictions on polls, the vacuum is going to be filled by spin from the campaigns and them leaking their own numbers sort of for their own advantages. And I think, you know, shameless plug alert, there's, a, you know, I think a real advantage to, uh, you know, having an independent, nonpartisan, credible poll actually tell you sort of what the actual state of the race is because otherwise it's just, uh, you know, all kinds of guys. I, I saw your hand at the back there. Yeah. Which That's a good question, I'm not sure. There, there wasn't any, I think it, nobody had to endorse her formally. It was just understood that all the MLAs were supporting her, pretty much. I mean, I, nobody had a press conference saying... endorsements mean something. I mean, is there a, the fact that she wasn't able to garner public support from any MLAs, does that mean anything? It's a good question. I mean, the, the, there, were, there were MLAs working actively on her campaign. You'd see them around the campaign office. Um, I wonder, I mean, yeah, I suppose they didn't sort of all have press conferences saying we're endorsing, here's our photo next to Judy. I'm not sure they, they would have to because we assume they're supporting Judy. And maybe the NDP didn't want to be quite that open, but why? Everybody already knows that Gord McIntosh is, you know, giving her 500 bucks and stuff. So I don't, yeah, yeah. I mean, my understanding was she's just not particularly liked. She's not. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, so I don't I, know. I, I don't know. Like, yeah. It's a genuine yeah. No, I, 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 I think Mary Agnes's point is, is pretty valid, though. You, you also saw no Tory MLAs yeah. endorsing anybody. Yeah. yeah. Except yeah. Scott Fielding, who's not quite an MLA, you know, so, yeah. 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 You, you to say the polls were right or wrong before, but who knows, right? Um, something happened, there was 50,000 uh, people that didn't uh, side with Judy that, uh, that gave Bowman the, the win there towards the end, so something changed. I, I was telling people, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm goofy about this, but uh, when my eight-year-old's class tells me they, they did an, a mock election and it was 15 to five for Bowman, a bunch of little eight-year-olds, I scratched my head that morning when I went to vote and I thought, interesting. Where did that mood come from that 15 eight-year-olds decided that they were voting for Bowman and five said they're voting for Judy? Does this mean something for later this evening? Should I use this next time? Forget the polls. Let's go to the, no, see, see, the, problem is not the, the grade three classes <laughs> and see what they say. Forget free, it's free polls. I just thought it was quite interesting. Um, but I think something had happened. I mean, I, I just think that the Bowman camp found a way to resonate with voters. And right at the end there, people started to feel uneasy about putting their vote to Judy. And a whole lot of them said, something's not right. This Bowman guy, he's saying something. I like what he's saying. I'm going to vote. And I think in that ballot box, that's when a lot of people probably changed their mind. I well, we thought they didn't like transit according to our poll. So that, it's, I mean, and, and Royce might have a better answer, a more empirical answer for you about what do we know about voters. Um, but to be honest, like Gino's eight-year-old example, that's about the, that, that's pretty much what we know about voters. As a journalist, I have no idea what you're thinking. I, I have my circle of friends. I try to count signs. I try to ask the, the candidates. We do the inevitable, let's do street streeters, which are little interviews with average folks at the Tims out in St. Charles, and we, we, are, we are completely unable to get any real sense of which way the mass of 200,000 voters are going to go. And, and there's virtually no like, empirical evidence, sort of you know, research on municipal voters. There's no party structure that kind of gives us you know, historical trends or how many campaign staff, how many, door, like, there's no kind of infrastructure there that gives us a hint of which way things might be going. And that's one of the reasons we like polls is at least it gives us kind of a barometer. I have no idea how you're gonna vote in the end. And I don't understand how it's gonna work and I'm shocked every time. That's the truth as a journalist. Notice when you- Royce, 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 Go ahead. Yeah. It's, uh, what we see sometimes in campaigns is, um, Occasions when public opinion 
clicks with a, a campaign, something that happens in the campaign, sort of mobilizes votes, and that's when we see a big shift in public opinion. Um, and I'm totally guessing here right now, but I do think that there is was a very a, a, a sort of nascent view out there that was receptive to this old politics, populist critique that Bowen was making, and that there might have been a place where it actually clicked, and I think that where that might have happened was in this, this stuff about severance things for politicians. I have no idea why Judy staked her claim so strongly on that, uh, but she was very strongly in favor of this, uh, uh, and, and Bowman, uh, that might have been a, a, a situation in which something had actually happened that could mobilize uh, 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 support. I mean, it, it moves so quickly between those two polls, it's unbelievable. Um, but I'm just guessing about that. I have, I have no idea I have access to any data to substantiate that. I, I'd like to give uh, folks another opportunity to ask a question here. So if someone, <laughs> someone has a question, yes. Well, I mean, that's that's the thing. I mean, I guess it would be a, you know, it's a competitive hiring process and usually they, they hire a headhunter or someone like that to go and go and find someone who's a qualified uh, CAO. But, uh, you but know, what, have, what, what, the city councillors do elect or appoint this? Well, they, 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 they could, I guess. I mean, what, 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 are, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, would, uh, you know, David Saunders, I mean, should, be, should he be the next CAO? We're, uh, we've just, uh, we've just uh, elected a mayor who's, all about transparency and openness, so I think uh, hopefully we'll see a, a, a real fair, open uh, competition for that job, and we'll hire the best person. Besides, I think Sean is, was the most transparent of any of the candidates. He was talking about what's wrong with saying all, right? And the average person, especially a young person like me, has no clue how saying all works, correct? So. He, he had the best campaign slogan, all steak, no sizzle. <laughs> <laughs> you, you had a question, sir. Some, I think. Um, yeah, some, it must have, I think. And I mean, you know, Salinger sort of acknowledged today that the PST hike probably did hurt her a little bit. Um, I, I actually, I, I think, if anything, it was the sense that, it was the sense that this is the old guard both sort of the NDP old guard, the provincial old guard, and it might be time for something new. I, I do think provincially we are at the very start of a time for change kind of feeling, and Bowman might have been right at that perfect time to sort of capitalize on that. I, I mean, Judy, for most of the campaign, was leading in, in, in the suburbs. You know, she, was, she did fine, and sort of those more, tend to be, you know, more conservative parts of town. So. Yeah, I don't. I'm, I'm. I'm of two minds on that. I, some, but not maybe. Not, probably not decisive. I, I think that. I think the thing with that is kind of interesting. That, that point that you raise about uh, the popularity, because the one thing I think the NDP has done very effectively in the last 15 years is to be able to push into the suburbs where they didn't really have a great um, toehold before. And, and in that, you know, the polls that we had did show that she was lead, you know, leading in some of those suburban areas. But the interesting thing is, if you go back and compare those numbers to 2010. Her number didn't really change. It's just that it was all fragmented, I think, amongst all these other candidates. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then, of course, in the end, I mean, what happened was Brian Bowman obviously consolidated that anybody but Judy Bowman, plus probably even took some away from her. So I don't know. That's just that's kind of my, my sense of it. Do you know where it's going? I was just going to say, I think that last part you mentioned was uh, anyone but Judy, where you know uh, he kind of went on the attack, and it was like a vote for her is going to be a vote for the old kind of guard. She couldn't distance herself from the provincial NDP. She was scared to kind of talk about the PST, talk about severance, and people just went, well, wait a minute, maybe she's not presenting the issues as, as much as we'd like. She, there's something about her that she's not sharing everything. And Bowman was just on it all the time. Then uh, I think he, he found the in, and he, he pushed the right buttons right at the end there, and people went, he's asking the right questions, he's not afraid, and he's given answers. And maybe set the bar high, but give the guy credit, he really worked hard, created a great uh, platform, and he just kept building on it. He just got a lot of momentum right at the end, when it counts. Royce, last word. I mean, she, it comes back to the front runner strategy. Uh, we assume that she could have helped herself by 
diverging from that by taking striking positions. But for example, you say the suburbs. Uh, she did have support in the suburbs. I don't think it would take that long, Judy, uh, uh, ad living to start to alienate some of those voters in the suburbs. And so this, I mean, it may have been that she was pursuing the only real strategy that could have worked for her. Uh, and in the end, it just wasn't enough, but nothing wouldn't have done any better. Or nothing else would have done anything better. I think that's, uh, I think that's all the time we have. Um, Marianne as well, you know, Stacia, Royce Coop, thank you very much for uh, sharing your insights. Uh, I don't know what we're possibly going to talk about now that uh, that is an election over. Uh, and, and thank you all very much for uh, for your great questions and for uh, taking part in the discussion.